Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Agile Technical Tester. We are in chapter 2 and looking at the next topic is 2.1 which is development and test techniques. The next sub-segment of it which we are covering in this tutorial is 2.1.2 Apply Behavior Driven Development. In the previous tutorial, we understood about TDD, that is test driven development, and here we are again continuing with something similar, which is behavior driven development, as it is one of the another technique in terms of agile development, which is applicable quite widely in the industry. When specifically we talk about BDD, is a technique in which developers, testers, and business representatives work together to analyze the requirement of the software system and formulate them using a shared language with verifying them automatically. So we generally prefer to have an automation approach when it comes to behavior driven development and the only difference between this is that this is be specific to behavior could be derived from the use cases which is direct interaction or real time scenario of a user with the system interaction and we uh, put it together instead of just a testers preparing the uh, test script alone uh, we have developers testers and business representatives put together to uh, create the outline for the entire thing BDD is strongly influenced by two separate disciplines one is of course the test driven development and second is domain driven development because domain plays a vital role here what kind of product you are making what are the different standards and practices of that particular domain which adds a lot of input and a lot of approach specific strategy to determine what test and what approach to be used it incorporates many of the core principles of both disciplines including collaboration design ubiquitous language automated test execution short feedback cycles and more so it has something to understand other than the tdd as an add-on tdd relies on unit tests to verify implementation details whereas bdd relies on executable scenario to verify behaviors and more so that's the core difference which we are trying to create between tdd and bdd but bdd generally follows a prescribed path for example create user stories collaboratively, formulate user stories as executable scenarios and verify behaviors, implement behaviors and execute the scenario to verify them. So as you see that the approach is slightly different than that of the test driven development. Teams that apply BDD extract one or more scenario from each user story and then formulate them as automated tests. A scenario represents a single behavior under specific condition. And I think these, these are some of the common and basic things which we pull out from the uh, foundation skills or definitely the CTFO certification also. We have learned a lot about that. In continuation, we are talking about how exactly a scenario is created and composed by. We have three major sections that is again from the foundation of Agile Tester Extension that the method which we use is given when then we generally identify these three commands or these three you know areas of each test and run those scenarios based on the behavior so given which basically describes that the state of environment or prerequisites or preconditions which uh, which will be executed or triggering the behavior when describes the action that triggers the behavior and then describes the <coughs> expected outcome of the behavior. So given something, when this happens on the product, then this is what will be the output of that. Extracting scenarios is another challenging job when it comes to behavior-driven development because the entire approach depends on how well you extract the scenarios from the user stories. And as it is a very important part of the business driven development, I'm sorry, uh, behavior driven development, then that's the reason we involve each one of the team member like testers, developers, as well as the business representatives, because a lot of input and review factor would be required then and there to make more efficient tests. So some of the extracting scenarios uh, from the user stories uh, factors will involve Identifying all acceptance criteria, 
specified by the user story and writing scenario for each criterion that means like each criteria will be addressed independently identifying functional use cases and examples and writing scenarios for each of them many use cases and examples are conditional so it's very crucial to identify each of the condition creating scenarios while testing exploratory which can help identifying related existing behaviors potential conflicts behaviors and minimal states alternative flows etc so here we're just trying to see that what are the detailed way of interacting with a particular extraction of scenario from the user stories or the use cases which are shared with you probably there are different areas which, which you do not want to miss when we start working with them looking for repeated use of steps or group of steps to avoid repeated work if you think this is repeated of course you can ignore them identifying areas that require random or synthetic data identifying steps that require mocks stops or drivers to maintain isolation and to avoid execution integration or possibly costly process ensuring scenarios are atomic and do not affect each other state that is isolated and deciding whether to limit the when section to one step in accordance with the principle that every test checks just one thing or to optimize for the other considerations such as test execution speed so putting it all together these are some of the special factors so i would say like the efforts required to extract scenarios from user story one should consider all these parameters while extracting the same to make it the best and meeting the expectation of applying behavior driven development at the end of course uh, we do have certain recommended guidelines for formulating these scenarios and these are again some standard inputs to be provided in terms of understanding the same the scenario should describe a specific behavior that the system supports from the perspective of a specific user like to be quite specific is very important because behavior may vary depending on the type of group users and different users again the scenario should use the third person when describing the steps that is given when then that means it should not be coming from the individual who is writing the grammar or the you know uh, english which is used there must be in the terms of an external person so that when a user is trying to do this this is what happens the scenario should be isolated and atomic so that they can be run in any order and not affect each other or rely on each other the given step should place the system in the state necessary for the when steps to consistently execute as expected so what what we exactly mean here is that just writing given when then conditions will not help you you should also assure make sure that these things are implemented accordingly as per the instruction which you wanted to pass on and the things are at the right points for example the given condition should not be used in when when conditions must not be used in given so that would actually confuse your execution the when step should describe the semantic actions that a user performs rather than the specific technical actions unless there is a particular need to test a specific action for example the user confirms the order it's a semantic action it generally preferred to the user clicks the confirm button so it's like you know in terms of like in technical action how exactly it is really important unless a button itself is, has to be tested what is that you are actually trying to see you are looking for the confirmation on the placing of the order then you go for the user confirms the order but you are trying to test the button by clicking on it you say uh, the user clicks the confirmation button then steps should describe specific observations or states they should not specify generic success or error states it's, it, it must be very specific when it comes to actual results and expected results because it's very important that how the exactly the system is trying to behave there might be a lot of other cosmetic details which you need to consider for example the color the font size and the exact message which should appear on the screen so it's very really important to be taken care at the same time so team that's all from this particular tutorial should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'll be there to address your query and answer them well beyond this we'll be getting back to you with another tutorial uh, soon till then keep learning keep exploring and keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning